Hello, I am DJ from the University of Washington, but this work was done as part of my summer internship at Microsoft Research looking at taxonomy of sound in virtual reality. So sound is a very critical component of the VR world. It can provide critical information such as approaching enemy footsteps, can increase realism such as through a wind blowing sound or add aesthetic to a VR app such as using water spilling sound. However, for many deaf and hard of hearing people, the sound and the information they convey may not be accessible which may limit the VR experience. They may miss, for example, critical cues in games or may not feel fully immersed. This is why a bigger research project is exploring how to make sound in VR accessible to DHS people. But before we talk about accessibility, we need to understand what all sounds are there in VR and how are these sounds designed. This is the focus of this paper and my talk. Specifically, I will present the design and evaluation of a novel taxonomy to organize and discuss VR sound, with a long-term goal to make VR accessible to deaf and hard of hearing people. Prior, most prior taxonomies focus on organizing real life sound, such as urban sound, animal calls, and music. But VR also includes many synthetic sounds and exaggerated real world sound. And so, the real world sound taxonomy cannot be directly used by VR. Which is why we turn to investigating the sound taxonomies for 2D video games and films. However, we found that they have several limitations. First, these taxonomies either cover the source or the intended functionality of the sound, but not both. Past work has shown that if you only cover one dimension, it could lead to ambiguity in certain nuanced meaning of sound. For example, a character speech, which is an example of a source of sound, can either represent critical information in a game, such as a narrator speech, or it could be meant to increase realism, as in crowd noise. So in this example, the same source of sound could have two different intent. But past taxonomies do not account for both dimensions. Then there are other limitations as well. Like for example, prior taxonomies are meant for 2D games and movies and do not account for 3D spatial variation in VR. And so we needed a new taxonomy for VR sound. To build and evaluate this new taxonomy, we performed two studies. The study one included interviews with 10 VR sound designers to develop our taxonomy, and in study two, we evaluated our taxonomy by classifying sound across 33 VR apps. In the talk, I will focus on results from these two studies. So let's start with the first one. The goal of study one was to explore different ways in which sounds are used or represented in VR. Our procedure included interviews with 10 VR sound designers and their experience of designing sound for two to three commercially available VR apps. Using open ADL and selective coding, we articulated a taxonomy of sound and other findings related to sound design in VR. Let's discuss some highlights. The sound designer described that there is no agreed upon terminology for common language for describing sound in VR, which makes it difficult to collaborate with others. As described by one of our participants, we were trying to describe the sound when a car engine sounded weird, and we described it as a stuttering sound. It sounded like an onomatopoeia for it, but that's it. No one else is going to know it. That's how a lot of audio stuff goes in the field. People name different things and they don't have a common language. But the good news is that through multiple rounds of open AGL and selective coding, we were able to articulate a taxonomy of sound that all designers agreed with. This taxonomy contains two dimensions, sound source and sound intent. Sound source represents the sound source 
that produced the sound such as the character or an object within the dimension we have nine categories that describe various localized and non localized sources of sound now some of these categories may appear to overlap such as interaction and notification sound but we have tested that they are all mutually exclusive so beyond the tour it is also important to describe the intent of sound then as i described earlier sound from the same tour may have different intent so we have a second dimension called sound intent containing six categories such as sound for conveying critical information or increasing realism the duration of taxonomy comes from the fact that both the source and the intent of the sound are represented and that a taxonomy also represents the sound that originates from the VR world such as interaction sound and the sound that are played in the background like music and a taxonomy represents both the 3D localized and non localized sources of sound and so that concludes the taxonomy we have other finding from study one that conveys the richness of the VR sound design world and i urge you to check them out in the paper so now that we have a taxonomy we need to evaluate how good it is whether it can really accurately represent VR sound so we conducted a second study with the goal of evaluating a taxonomy across VR apps we did this by using a taxonomy to analyze sound in 33 VR apps across a variety of categories such as games, fitness, art, etc. We recruited 8 HCR researchers who used and classified sound in this VR app using a taxonomy. Let's see what we found. The primary finding was that a taxonomy was able to cover nearly all sound encountered in this app. The two sounds that were not covered were due to a little confusion among surrounding ambient and music sound. The difference is that the surrounding ambient and sound that originate from inside the VR world, while music is a background world, and which we should have made more clear in our evaluation. So beyond our finding, we also identified categories that are important to represent acceptably and how we can develop visual and haptic substitutes for them, which are described in the paper. So in summary, our work contributes a novel taxonomy to accurate both the source and the intent of sound in VR and additional insights on two studies for sound design and sound accessibility in VR. So where do we go from here? We have an immediate follow-up work in another paper which leverages the taxonomy to build and evaluate several VR sound accessibility papers for DSS users. So check it out. Also, though we targeted accessibility for DSS users, a taxonomy can also be broadly used. For example, a taxonomy can also help sound designers organize sound in VR and maybe it could help them invent new sound effects. Our findings can also benefit hearing users as well. For example, there may be cases when you may not be wearing headphones while using VR, in which case you may appreciate having an alternate feedback modality for sound. And finally, our work can potentially support other disabilities as well, such as those prone to sensory overload. So to conclude, I'd like to leave you with a statement which my mentor Murray Morris described so well. Too often, accessibility is an afterthought while making technology, resulting in unacceptable or subpar user experiences. VR technologies are at a crossroad in time when there is still an opportunity to codify accessibility best practices for this emerging medium. While researchers have begun to consider making VR accessible by people with visual and mobility impairment, the needs of DHS users are as yet unexplored. In the talk, I have presented the first comprehensive look at sound in VR with the goal of supporting sound accessibility for DHS and users. And we hope that researchers and practitioners will continue to enhance sound accessibility in VR by spreading awareness, developing guidelines, and innovating accessible interfaces. Thank you.